I think the pendulum is beginning to swing back towards drama. And I, and I think perhaps that's what it does all the time. Drama was a lot written about it in the 20s and 30s and swung away. Then it swung back again in the 60s and 70s. Then it started to swing away. So I'm hoping that... It swung, <laughs> no. ba swung back in. Exactly. <laughs> Today we have with us the legendary Cecily O'Neill, a pioneer of process drama and an inspiration for educators worldwide. She has reshaped the way we look at drama and drama for learning. Join us for the conversation now. It is a great honor and a great privilege to have Cecily O'Neill with us talking about drama when we did not have any resource material to, to look at when we started working with drama and education in India. It was Cecily's uh, video film that we had seen. And that informed us about what we were doing and thinking about drama and looking at drama beyond performance in a classroom environment as a learning medium. Whatever we were trying to do with it was meaningful, was truthful. So thank you, Cecily, for your time and, and your love and affection that you shower on all of us, knowingly, unknowingly, through your books and your videos. There are many, many drama teachers across India who have watched your video and, and you know, have gotten inspired. And it's a privilege, and I am taking this to all the drama teachers in India today. Uh, thank you very much, This is lovely to hear, but a little undeserved, I feel. Um, I think the video was one made at the Unicorn Theatre, gosh, and um, <laughs> where the director was mostly intent on making everything repeat, repeating it and so on. So, um, but the children were lovely. So, um, but it's always a bit, um, uh, sort of makes one a bit anxious to be filmed because uh, so many things can go wrong. And it's often not what one most expects. But on that occasion, yes, I do remember some of those children with great affection. And I'm glad that it's useful. It is. It is, definitely. Yeah. Cecily, um, the world of drama and drama and education, it's very diff looked at very differently in our country. When we say the word drama, we usually talk about acting and performance. Uh, but a lot of elements of the theatre is embedded in the work that we do in drama and education. So how did you begin your journey as a drama teacher? Oh, goodness me. Well, remembering back a very long time, um, I was teaching uh, English um, in, uh, in a secondary school in South London. <clears throat> and my own background is that even as a small child, I used to round up the neighboring children and make them uh, put on little plays in the garage, that kind of thing, um, uh, where I was, you know, I just wanted to boss everybody about and <laughs> tell them what to do. <laughs> and I never trained, actually, as a teacher, but I had the uh, fortunate uh, advantage of arriving with my husband from Ireland into um, England at a time when they were very short of teachers. <clears throat> so they accepted us as teachers, um, whereas back in, in Dublin, where we came from, we, without a diploma, we couldn't have worked in a school. Anyway, we, it was nice to get away and come to another country. And, um, and uh, even though at, at the time, this is the early 60s, uh, there was a lot of even prejudice then. So you'd see a house that said no blacks or Irish. So... Um, uh, but um, we stayed in Oz Court, which was full of Australians and everybody else from around the world got as far as there. And, um, and uh, we both got jobs in schools. And actually, both of us found that we quite enjoyed it. And um, so I did supply teaching in various strange locations around London. And, um, and my husband got a job in, um, in a boys' secondary school and really 
really loved it. And um, uh, whereas I was eventually, I got a job <coughs> teaching English, and um, I was able to go on a, a drama course. And because I was always interested in, in drama and theatre, I uh, signed up for the course. And we had this was the early seventies, and in that course, we had everything from games, improvisation, uh, you name it, anything that drama was about at the time, and mostly at the time, it was about games. And um, then uh, we were introduced to Gavin Bolton's work, and uh, that was a in real inspiration for me. And then through him, we learned about Dorothy's work, and I was had the... Uh, I got a job, much to my surprise, uh, being in charge of in-service training mm. in drama, in a, a centre for uh, for drama in, in London. And I really didn't know much what I was doing. <laughs> uh, though I had some wonderful colleagues, um, uh, a woman called Rosemary and, um, uh, uh, and Alan Lambert, who became a really <clears throat> close friend and colleague, and we wrote drama structures together, which is really uh, based on what, t what English schools were like at the time, which they certainly are not like now, where um, the curriculum was a much more open thing. Um, there was uh, a kind of premium almost on innovation, on creativity, on <clears throat> and uh, London was full of um, of teachers, uh, teachers' courses, uh, teachers' centres like this for science, maths, language, and so on. Um, but uh, Mrs. Thatcher's arrival put an end to that. But um, in between time, um, Alan and I began to learn what we were doing. <coughs> and um, we have been very impressed with Dorothy's work. So, uh, we decided that we would do uh, some work where Alan would take on a role and I would be the person operating the lesson. And it was all right. It wasn't very, the results weren't very wonderful. But um, uh, we decided we'd go and talk to Dorothy about it. And she was so generous and engaging. And so she said, well, come up to... Uh, uh, to Newcastle and, and um, you know, tell me what you've been doing. So we got on the train. We got, because we were, we could kind of more or less determine our own timetables. So up we went and we said what we've been doing. She said, no, why don't you do it a little differently? Why don't one of you teach and the other person watch and then reverse the experience and then give each other notes on what you saw? So we did that. We would borrow a class from a school we knew and um, do exactly that and then go to the pub afterwards and talk about what happened. And it, I think in that way, we saw what worked. We saw how different we were in our own uh, approaches in a, light, in a way. So we had our own practice kind of uh, reflected back to us, which was incalculably useful. And then... Uh, Gav um, Alan went to study with Dorothy for a year, and then I followed and went to study with Gavin for a year. Mm. Um, and so um, I think, again, that perfectly fitted our different um, personas and our different um, approaches, if you like. Uh, so that was such a wonderful gift to be able to do that and to think for a whole year about about what the whole thing was about. Um, and then uh, Mrs. Thatcher came to power and all of those wonderful supportive in-service places for teachers mm -hmm. where nobody could afford them anymore because she broke up uh, the Inner London Education Authority into small um, local kind of um, districts. And of course, the rich districts could afford what they liked and the poor districts couldn't afford anything. So. Uh, it made a huge impact on the whole thing. And so I was <clears throat> no longer warden of the drama centre. Uh, and I could probably have got a job 
as an inspector, but I didn't think that would suit me. Mm. Meanwhile, I was invited to go and work in the States uh, uh, at the Ohio State University, and then that's a whole other chapter. Mm. But you might want to pick me up on some of what I've said. <laughs> yes. Um, your, the way we uh, see you work with us, I've, I've done two workshops with you, very fortunate again. <laughs> uh, but it seems that we are in a play, we are in a story. And we move along, you move along with us, and we move along with you within a story, as if we are performing and not performing at the yes, same time. Yes, yes. How did this kind of work, such as drama, emerge? Where did it emerge from? I think it emerged uh, very much from my work with Gavin Bolton. Mm -hmm. And if uh, if his works are not, uh, I mean, they're probably out of print, but they, I'm sure they're available online. But um, they are, I think, invaluable because Dorothy is very profound, and she said, you know, she had a marvelous grasp of of uh, what to do with children. Often. Um, and again, very much based on theatre, but that isn't always obvious in her work. And as she went on with her work, she became, I think, less interested in the, in the um, theatrical moments within a piece, uh, but actually became almost um, much more interested in, in the learning that came out of it. Now, I'm interested in learning, but I, in a way, I would like it to emerge from the work. Um, so... Um, Working with Gavin, uh, I remember um, doing a work where he, a, a piece of drama where he was watching me, and I decided I'd start in role. And for some reason, it's, we seemed to be Native American Indians. <laughs> uh, I, I can't remember what was going on. We did have a problem, I think, with white settlers coming in, stealing our land or something. And I was the elder of the tribe. And I began this, and we were discussing it all, and it was all um, very worrying and so on. And, and I didn't know how, how to stop being in role and how to let something else emerge. Mm -hmm. And I looked over at Gavin, who was watching me, <laughs> you know, I said, uh, you know, I believe I should return to my uh, TP or whatever. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> and, um, and I can see Gavin saying her days are numbered <laughs> in the background. So um, I, uh, we talked about it, and I said, I just, I, I don't know how to stop being, I, if you start something, how do you get out of it and change to another mode? So that was a moment of learning for me, and there were many along the way. But I think I've always been interested in setting up a kind of, dramatic encounter where we all agree that we are uh, um, social workers or, um, you know, aliens or whatever it might be, but that we have a, we have a task in a way, not in quite the sense that Dorothy talks about tasks, but where we have um, um, a responsibility, a duty, something must be done, mm -hmm. you know, uh, or else we... Uh, maybe we're the people that things are being done to. But um, I realized from Gavin again that episodes were a key part of it, and that took a long time to sink in, that I didn't have to be in role from dawn to dusk, mm. you know, never never stopping. Um, because that's too... Um, it, it, uh, for me, role is a way of launching that imagined world. Um, and then stepping back and seeing what, uh, what episodes I can discover or uh, what phases or, or what, um, I hesitate to use the word conventions, <laughs> but um, what, what steps I can take that will um, uh, pr uh, move the things along, but also keep us in the imagined world, uh, or maybe talking about it and stepping outside it to, to reflect on it. Um, but um, I always like to reflect within the work rather than discussing it. Because I think if a teacher is discussing something with the class, their voice is too powerful. Yes. Uh, so I would 
put people in pairs or in small groups to talk to each other about what's going on and then let me know. Mm. So um, the other great teacher, uh, of course, is Shakespeare. Yes. <laughs> and um, and uh, that, I think, any time I think, what should I do now or what would be another possible way to take the story, although story implies narrative, mm. um, but to take the journey, what the next step on the journey, uh, I would think, well, um, uh, do we have a, um, a ritual of some kind? Do we have a trial? Do we have a, uh, a ghost? Or uh, can we have a dream? Can we, can we um, kind of proceed in a way that is uh, interesting as far as the story is concerned, but also that has an aesthetic quality or a poetic quality, a symbolic quality, which is very hard to find in a lot of classrooms. Um, not because the kids can't, but because sometimes circumstances don't allow it. Kids are amazingly um, imaginative, but the imagination needs needs exercise. And I think so often nowadays everybody's on their phone and their video games, and um, and and they're rarely asked to be in an imaginative situation where decisions are necessary, other than pressing a button. So. Um, Episodes are, are, are key, I think, in progressing the dramatic world. So, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. So, um, I mean, I, I understand where uh, the the processes that we are engaging in now as the the new age drama teachers uh, uh, are also supported by technology to an extent, quite an extent. Yes, especially during the pandemic, uh, we had to move online. Yeah. And it was difficult, but what actually saved us was process drama. No, really. And mantle of the expert. Yes, goodness. That is what actually saved us as teachers, yes. because um, we could go in and out of floor, and we could uh, also work individually with children, but also in a group, right. because everybody was there in their own, you know, bedrooms doing yes. their classes. Uh, from their bedrooms, but it was, it, it became so, the imaginary world was created with such charm and such reality wow. that that was their only go-to place, place during the week, uh, you know, because they wanted to go into an imaginary world. Yes. And we were, I, and we have evidence from parents talking to us about yes. how drama and engaging in drama throughout the pandemic online actually help them to stay uh, abreast with uh, you know and and stay stay, stay focused on on their uh, communication skills or their talking the social skills exactly all the things that the kids lost yes in those yes. years that's wonderful so if you if you're online how large a group would it be it would be just six ah, more than that oh there you go because i was once i was asked uh, actually by david montgomery who here if i would uh, do some teaching online with his students in america and um and because the group is large i you i couldn't see them all or see what how they were responding and it was not a nice experience, so I, I vowed never to do that again. Now six people, possibly. Yeah, I think that's a very, very wise choice, and I completely see how it would... It's already a, a closed world. Yes, it is. Yeah. And with the seven year, five to seven-year-olds, we actually have four. We don't have more oh, than four in a group. Perfect. So on the screen, yes. there are only five screens that are open. Yes. And... Uh, the best thing that happened during pandemic is that we got an entry into their world, of into course. their space. And then yeah. it was so beautiful to help them transform their space into an imaginary world. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and really, if it wasn't for uh, the training later on when we got from your books and from Dorothy's books, uh, people, I mean, who have written about Dorothy, yes. because yeah. Dorothy never wrote anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. But that, that really... Um, brought out the real need for drama yes. in a child's life. Oh, the social uh, aspects, the communicative aspects, the human aspects, the, oh, well, I mean, I don't have to say that because you know this, that stuff, but, but to convince educators at the top 
uh, the people who call the shots, mm. that this stuff is not important, is, is frighteningly hard in England and, and getting, getting harder. But I, I have hope. Um, <laughs> and um, it, it's a kind of disease, it's the drama disease, never give up hope. Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, I think um, I've noticed, I think both like this conference, uh, uh, the last of three, um, some work I was doing in uh, Slovenia recently, um, and various other things. Uh, I think the pendulum is beginning to swing back towards drama, and I, and I think perhaps that's what it does all the time. Drama was a lot written about it in the 20s and 30s and swung away. Then it swung back again in the 60s and 70s. Then it started to swing away. So I'm hoping that... It swung <laughs> no. back, it swing back in. Exactly. And the yes. places, well, the sort of work you've spoken about and the other people I've come across recently in other places, China, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it really interests me that they're so keen because it seems at odds with their social setup. Yes, because they, I think uh, drama is the most effective way to learn language. Oh, of course, that and, I understand. And, yes, yes. And, and learn the ways of society. Yes. And I think the, the sooner everybody realizes that, it's better. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And also that, uh, I mean, in, it's a, ideally a very questioning mode, a very... Um, you know, and uh, the imaginative thing is, if you know, if you can't, if you can't imagine a better world, you'll never create it. It's hard anyway. You may never create it, but if at least you can imagine it, what it would be like to live in a world without war or to live in a world without hunger, um, that would be lovely. But every time I turn on the news, which I do less and less, <laughs> um, the world is not like that. But how can we live in it? as it is and still be human beings? And I think the answer is perhaps in the kind of work you were doing with your four group, group of four, group of six, or even what's happening in this conference where people from every country you can imagine uh, are here to explore, celebrate, learn, share. And that, that, that's hope. That's hope. That's yes. and drama is all about, always about hope. It absolutely is. It and um, yes. it can't be. You know, although I do like yeah. the blood. Yes, <laughs> and so did Shakespeare. Yes. At the same time, even so, um, there is a sense of of something. Something has been completed, but something remains to be done. Something can carry on yes. in a better way, perhaps. Yes, and I think hope is the only way to live. And Drama brings that hope back every time, you know, when we are engaging with yes. it, it is timeless. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't know about India, but, but there's a huge number of young people in England with mental health issues. And, um, you know, to get, I think, to get an appointment, uh, if you had a child who had a mental health issue, I think you, you could wait. And you yeah, absolutely. Yes. And then um, uh, to deal with that, I mean, I'm not saying that drama could cure it, but, but a, a kind of approach that reminded people that they mattered and that they, they had something possibly to live for, or something certainly to bring so to society. Um, and that would be wonderful. Thank you so much, Cecily, <laughs> for doing this talk. Well, because thank you. Um, it is so important for us who are now set to inspire a new generation of teachers to, to bring what you have, uh, you know, done all your life working and, you know, being in drama, your legacy. Uh, it's very important that we take, learn from it and give it yes. to and and and, uh, um, and the fact that I'm still doing it, but but um, still learning. Like every time you meet a new group of people, um, certainly in this kind of setting, 
I think, oh my goodness, I, I used to know that, but I've forgotten it, and now it's come back to me. And or, or now somebody has done something, I go, oh, it's not marvelous, that's new to me. So keep learning, keep finding new ways, keep doing the drama. Keep doing the drama. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.